Now to North Carolina, where the autopsy for murder teen Hania Aguilera has been released. We followed this story taken from her front yard. The 13-year-old steps from her front door even. In November, this happened. Tragically, three weeks later, her body was found. The autopsy shows Hania likely died from suffocation, strangulation. Her remains were found in a pit of water four and a half feet deep. Her body was naked face down. She had a plastic folding table on her back even. Michael Ray McClellan has been charged in her death, this man. Want to welcome attorney Jesse Weber, distinguished professor of applied forensics at Jacksonville State University, friend of the show as well, Joseph Scott Morgan. Welcome to you both. Uh, Joseph, what can you learn from the details of the autopsy besides the horrific state in which she was left? Yeah, she was. Uh, this little girl went through hell is all I can, uh, that's the way I can only sum it up. She has limited, what I refer to, limited vaginal trauma, and that's essentially all that the autopsy uh, report uh, concludes. Uh, she's in a moderate state of decomposition. Uh, so that leads us to this idea, what exactly killed Hannah? And I think that's the reason a lot of people are thinking, probably in this particular case, suffocation. Mm -hmm. And Jesse Weber, uh, what does this mean in terms of the evidence for the suspect? What is this person facing? Because everyone waits, of course, family members, to see what the case shows, and attorneys as well, and how much evidence they have. Absolutely, and as my good friend Joseph explained, because of the horrible nature of this, the atrociousness of this crime, the investigators, actually the prosecution, is wondering whether or not they should seek the death penalty, because those are for the really aggravated murder circumstances, and based upon what we've learned so far, this could very well fall into it, and he is facing charges not just of kidnapping, but rape and murder, and he has a long, violent history that will not play well for him in a trial if he decides to not even take a, to go to trial and not take a plea deal. And Jesse, I spoke to her cousin uh, shortly after she went missing. Do we know if this was a crime of opportunity, if he was looking to steal that vehicle and he saw her out front, or we don't know? Could he have been watching her for several days? Is that known at this point? The details are still coming out. Obviously, mm -hmm. we would learn more in a preliminary hearing on April 2nd. But what we do know, based upon his history, is he has a history of assault with a deadly weapon. He has a history of breaking and entering. It's mm -hmm. hard to know what his motivation was in the past. And he has been linked to a 2016 rape. Um, it's mm -hmm. hard to know the motivation of anybody, but let alone somebody this who's been in and out of the court system. And Joseph Scott Morgan, you've covered crimes for years, of course, with forensics, and you have really seen so many horrible things happen. Chances are if they do it once, they've either done it before or they're going to do it again. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of these people are repeat offenders. Uh, and in this particular case, he went some distance to cover his tracks. Remember, she was submerged uh, in essentially a, a, a mud puddle covered with a plastic table that was literally resting on her back. She was found face down. And one of the interesting things about this, she was absent her clothing. Susan, mm -hmm. that clothing is somewhere. I'm hoping that they'll be able to put their hands on it at some point, Tom, because that could right. contain valuable trace evidence as well. I wonder why uh, the table to kind of conceal where she was so people wouldn't find that's, her, Joseph? Yeah, that's that's my thought, Susan, to essentially put her in uh, in an obscured position so that no one would find her, at least no one would find her for a time. And in this particular case, that worked. I think we were three to four weeks downrange from the moment in time she disappeared. And Jesse, preliminary hearing, will we see the mom there, family members? Uh, are they allowed to show up or is it a preliminary hearing just kind of to plead guilty or not guilty or see if there's enough evidence to move forward? They will probably be there as difficult as it is for them to be there. They want to know what's going to happen. And if we even get there, there's a possibility that right. he can meet with his defense team and say, listen, our best option is to take a plea deal if it's even on the table. But they're going to want to be there for every step of the way, as difficult as it may be um, for them, especially given the heinousness of this crime and what we just learned, the details of what this young girl went through is just extraordinary. Yeah, the cause of death, I wonder how much that's going to play in until to see if a plea deal is even on the table. Table, as you mentioned, Jesse. Jesse Weber, Joseph Scott Morgan, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.